appreciate y'all chilling and politicking and paying attention because it's real vital. You heard me? Trench Talk TV. So that's what it's going to sound like. It ain't going to sound like nothing sugar coat. It ain't going to sound like what you want to hear. It's going to be Trench Talk. What initially happened was um, we talked about the, um, the album um, was as we started to build our, our brand, as our name started to build a little bit, in, in, in the music scene and, and, and in the streets, you know, um, a, a major record label had came um, calling. I wouldn't say major, but I'd just say a national record label. Um, back then, it had a rapper named MC Breed, the same uh, record label as him, like Itchy Bomb, but it was like Swamp Dog Entertainment Group, SDEG. What's the name of the label? It was called Swamp Dog Entertainment Group. So gotcha. SDEG Records. They came down and they went to this place called Treasure Chest, which was one of the name uh, one of the top uh, um, um, record selling, it was a record store, but it's, you know, one of the top record selling stores in the, in the city. Urban too, you know, black black store owners. And so they came to them and asked them which ones, what local groups were hot and whatever. And of course he said us. And so that's how we started to get in touch with him. So the songs we already had already, you know, he was ready to take them local songs and make an album, you know, and it was gonna be a national album. Gotcha. And so that's basically what was the plan. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna redo. Actually, that's the cover that you see. We're gonna redo the cover. Mm. Put all y'all on there, and we, you know, with everything. That was gonna so, be our first form of yeah, project. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so sometimes people people see that, you know, bottom posse, and um, or you see a lot of um, artists, especially from Baton Rouge. They first one that it was mostly like a local hit, or it was like a local album. You know, I was fortunate enough to have my first album was gonna go was gonna be national until everything fell apart and what happened basically was um uh, I ended up and I didn't even sell drugs at the time but I was affiliated with a lot of people that sold drugs. And so um basically I, I got set up from the outside from the outside in, you know. I still don't know whether it was legitimate who it was, why what happened, but it was like basically an entrapment. And in in a nutshell, me and my homeboy was at a store one day and these two girls, this man had pay phones. These two girls was on the pay phone. What and year was this? We talking pay phones. Yeah, we're talking, we're talking, um, talking about like 91, something like that. Oh, we still yeah, here. Right. Right. We still right. in that, yeah, that's still in that same, in the same year. And so, um, um, they was on the pay phone. As I come out the store to get in the car, my homeboy was waiting on me. He was like, man, them girls is, me saying they, they, they staring at you. You know, what them girls staring at you for? So when I looked up, I See them, they wave and stuff, and like this and that. Now these two white girls, that's the one right here by LSU. They on the these two white white girls. I get out of the car, I go in and um, talk to them. At the time, we had pages and everything. This is going to show you how long ago that was. And so uh, they gave me the number. I got their number. I jumped back in the car. I leave. Um, just so happened that that night, it was a football game was on. So I was over by my homeboy house watching Monday Night Football. We had a homeboy who went to McKinley. He was supposed to be, we were supposed to see him playing on the team for the Detroit Lions. His name Daryl Darryl Milburn, and call him Big Red. And, but anyway. I heard of him. Yeah, but anyway, um, we were watching the game that night. So then the girls called me and asked me, could I bring them some drugs, basically, you know? Could I bring them 40 and a 20, this and that, or some powder or whatever. And so I, um, I didn't sell drugs, but me being trying to see what's up with them. I said, I can bring it to you, you know, because I know people can get it. I just basically get it from them and bring it to them. Party but, favor. Right, that's, and that's what I did. I did that. And so that started where now over a course, maybe a couple of months, me and a girl, um, I started, every time, as she asked me for stuff, I'll give it to her basically. So I did that maybe three or four times on a different, you know. And then me and a girl had hooked up and everything before. So I didn't ever think of nothing of it. Nothing so I, I approximately then come to uh, a year later, fast forward a year later. I don't, you know, I forgot all about the girl now, you know. A year later, they basically come with some indictments and indict me for, give me three counts of it. Like a secret indictment? Yeah, secret indictment. It was over a year old. I hadn't seen a girl in over a year old. So at this time, I'm thinking something must not be right because I don't sell drugs. I'm right. a rapper, you know what I mean? And so, um, but when I read the report, you know, then I knew, but it, it was it was a certain night. It was December twenty fourth when it happened. It started coming back. Yeah, to you. it started came back to him. I just couldn't believe it. You know what I mean? And so that's at the time where 
Um, we get ready to sign the contract, um, the national contract, but you know, boom, I'm in a parish prison, I'm in a jail. Now, my mother had to come to jail with the contract. I actually signed my contract while I was in jail. You know, she had to bring it through the visiting booth for me to sign it. Do you remember uh, the number amount or how much that first contract was? Well, the first contract I signed, it, it, it's, it's embarrassingly low, you know, but to be to try to be 100% uh, transparent, you know, I signed my first contract in jail for $1,500 when my signing bond was what I signed for. It was $1,500. Actually, it was, I think it was, it was either, it was like $5,000 or, or whatever, but we, I had to split that between right. them and yeah, so it was something like that. And then by me being in jail, at that time, I just needed any kind of exactly. money, you know, because I'm at that point, I'm still hopeful that I can get out. And the record company is trying to do everything, you know, but I'm in a, I'm in a messed up position, number one, because we, they had just formed a court called Drug Court here. And it was one judge that handled all of the drug cases, and his name was Foster Sanders. And he was known for being, you know, hard. He was, if some people say his daughter had OVD before, so he had like a, sort of like a, you know. Vendetta. Yeah, a vendetta, a grudge against, you know, this and that. And so I'm trying to prove I'm not a drug dealer, but the amount of counts that I have, you know, they, they carry five to, 30, five to 30 each at that time. And so, you know, it was, it, it was serious. They still do. Yeah. It, Distribution. It, right. Schedule still one. Do. That's right. Five to 30, they still do. Yeah, and so um, when that happened, that kind of stopped all the progress as far as now they got the cover here, you know, they're getting ready to put the album in the store, you know, and I'm not there to do any type of promotion or do any shows, no shows. So Slim now is out there by itself. He's rapping my parts and his parts, you know, just doing stuff like that. And it just, you know. Being young men, did, did that start in it? At that point, did it start any friction between any you and any of your uh, group members? Uh, it did. It did. It started a little bit of a friction, you know, uh, with me. You know, I think um, I felt like, you know, that, of course, more could have been done. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, we all feel like that. Yeah, I felt like more could have been, been done. Yeah, because it make it, at the end of the day, they end up giving me, uh, sending me like the six years, you know. It's spending a couple of years, but I ended up getting the six years. And so... Now, the album is all the way out in the stores. I'm in prison. You know what I mean? And so, um, I always talk about, you ever seen that movie, Hustle and Flow? Right. Yeah, and at the end, the, the guards go up to him and say, you know, hey, y'all, you the one made whoop that trick. And, you know, uh, we call ourselves 5 and all that shit. You know, that happened to me. That literally happened to me. You know, that literally, I'm going inside my dorm, I'm in prison, and the guards come up to me and say, man, they say you got records in the store, you know? I said, yeah, I do. They couldn't believe it. How that was mentally going through that in the It was, uh, it, 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 it turned out to be, you know, not as bad as I thought, you know, because um, believe it or not, it was a lot of people that, that I had grew up that I had grew up with that I hadn't seen that was up there. So it was kind of like, you know, I got on the basketball team. I just kind of made, made, you know, made up my situation or whatever. So. But it was at the end of the day when I look back at it, it was a lot of guys that I had grew up with that was already up there. So when I got there, it was oh Joe P. Because I got one homeboy, his name Demon. He's out night right now, and I remember he was up there, and I got a part in Angola Bound. Now this, now this, now this go to show you the, you know, the irony of I got a song called Angola Bound and I'm in prison while this song is out. You feel what I'm saying? So it was almost kind of like I, I predicted what was gonna happen to me because I made the song before I went to. Angola, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, it's a part where I'm in I'm in prison and um on Angola Bow and and Silky Slim say, uh, and my nigga Joker P is on the yard with me. And I remember when I went up there and Demon looked at me and Demon say, No, no. My nigga Joker P is on the yard with me. <laughs> <laughs> and so we laugh about that now, you know, when I say that. You're like, no, you on the yard with me for real, you know. In so real life. Yeah, in real life, yeah. So, you know, so that's kinda like what 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 um what um man what stopped everything, you know, that stopped the money. I couldn't tour, I couldn't promote and go to Bond. I couldn't do it on shows or all the other ones, the graveyard shifts, the ones that people had started started to like, you know. I could couldn't it really evolve as much as I wanted to as an artist, you know. Uh, not only by being in there but to kinda Engaging what the people wanted in there, because like I said, a lot of my stuff was was a lot was real violent, you know. 
I'm um, pretty sure though, over yeah. those six years, you might not have evolved more as an artist, but I'm pretty sure you evolved more as a person. Well, good brother, good. Uh, what happened was I didn't have to stay there for six years. Gotcha. I ended up getting a blessing, and um, I came home in a little over two years. And so, um, but that was a long enough time for um, not only for me to be upset with what was going on. So when I came out and got out, you know, that's when things started to pop. You know, I got back on my grind. I got back to Joker P. I 